Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to discuss the pentatonic scale. You know, it's funny. It's like some students, I try to get them to get away from it. And then some, I'm like, oh, no, no, you need to go to it. Um, but it has its uses. And you can usually separate the men from the boys, how they use it. And so I'd like to show you why it works what things don't work that when you do it, people who are listening can tell, like, you really need to work on stuff or if you've got it down. And then I'll just give you a couple of tips on things that I like to add to pentatonic. So we're going to look at the G minor pentatonic. And I'm going to show you things about the scale you may not know how it relates to a major blues. I'm also going to show you minor blues and how the relationship changes and why a lot of uh, beginner guitar players prefer the minor blues over the major. Depending on the song, I guess, for me, but you'll see why. So in your blues in G, your first chord is a G7. So the scale of the G pentatonic minor then will have the one followed by the sharp nine. Now you might be sitting there going, that's a minor third against the G7 chord. We already have the major third and the dominant seven. The B flat is considered a sharp nine. The next note is a four, and then a five, and then a dominant seven or a flat seven. So in this scale, we have the one, the sharp nine, the four, the five, and the flat seven. And that's basically the five notes that you play here. The problem with the sharp nine being in it is that people who are new to playing sit on that note over that chord and it doesn't really feel good or sound good. You want to stay away from it or bend it up to a full natural B to the major third. So if you were playing something like not great better. You see like a lot of blues players that'll bend that. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to bend to the major third. And those are the five notes. When you get to the four chord in the song, a C9, well, the relationships now will change. The G minor pentatonic scale will be a five, a flat seven, a one, a nine, and a four, or an eleven. And that pretty much works pretty nice. There's nothing really outside that you have to think about. It's pretty basic. So what happens in blues is the five chord, the D7, not only is it um, a dominant seven chord, it's acting as the five in this progression, which means the more tensions you throw at it, the nicer the return is when you land back home. And so here, the reason why the G minor pentatonic works is because there's a lot of tensions. And let's see what those are. We have the 11 or the 4. We have a sharp 5. We have a flat 7. We have the 1. And we have the sharp 9. So it causes a lot of tensions. 
And because that, it can be nice. Now, um, there are other things you can play over that. You could go to the D minor pentatonic over that D, and you would still have tensions because you would have the same tensions you would have had over the G7. You would have the 1, the sharp 9, the 4, the 5, and the flat 7. But there's something that I do in cases like this. I use my own pentatonic. That would be my version of what I call the pentatonic altered. And what that is against the against the D7 chord, I would play the 1, the flat 9, the sharp 9, the major 3rd, the sharp 5. And you can mix it right back in with the G minor pentatonic. I'm going to talk about minor blues. In minor blues, it's a lot easier because things fit a lot into the chord easier. So in, in minor blues, we have, this is the G minor pentatonic is going to be the one, the flat third, the four, the five, and the flat seven. There's no bending of notes to try to make things fit. It just works. The next chord would be a C minor. And over the C minor 7, it, we have the 5, flat 7, 1, 9, and 4. The same. Over the D minor 7, we have the 11, we have the sharp 5, we have the flat seven, we have the one, and we have the minor third. So there's less tensions. The only tension note in that really is the sharp five, um, and everything else is pretty copacetic. So I hope that helps you understand why the pentatonic works and how it works against those chords and maybe what to, to avoid. Again, like if you're hearing this chord, I wouldn't be going, which I sometimes see from beginner players. A, a way to break out of that is try to come up with some type of other rhythmic pattern, first of all, if you're gonna play those notes. So it would be more like, at least it's a different rhythmic pattern. And then the other thing is, I avoid this note and it'll be more like I think there um, you will find a much more gratifying result anyway that's a little something about how the pentatonics work I hope this helps you in your struggle to be free and there must be 50 ways to play the same scale anyways very good <laughs>